Hey friends, welcome back to the channel with more of The Big Bang Theory. This is season two, episode 10. And I mentioned this in the commentary for episode seven, but I keep forgetting to mention it in the intro for the subsequent episodes. We now have an editor for The Big Bang Theory. So give a very warm welcome to Nakia in the comments below. Uh, we're still working out some kinks, but I'm glad to be getting some help with this series. And uh, last time we had Sheldon trying to interfere with Leonard and Stephanie's relationship. He kept trying to push them together even though they didn't really have any problems and they wouldn't have any had any problems without him around. But uh, it were, all worked out for the best. And they, by the end of the episode, Leonard and Stephanie are official on Facebook, which is as official as you can possibly get. Hint, uh, note to the sarcasm in my voice. But anyway, I'm excited to continue. If you want to watch the full reaction or see episodes a week early, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. Otherwise, take a quick moment to leave a like and let's get started. I'm constantly hearing this annoying sound. Your own voice? Me too. It's more of a relentless narcissistic drone. <laughs> narcissistic drone. Yep, there's no inflammation at all, Sheldon. Then it must be a tumor. A tumor? <laughs> Maybe it's a lingering bacterial infection from all those childhood toilet swirlies. Is that possible? Oh, no. I used no. to get those all the time. Yikes. Even in church. Wow. Okay. Swirl it the other way. Circle, circle, dot, oh. dot. Now you have a cootie shot. I thought she was playing along and okay. giving him a, okay. a psychological cure, but she was teasing him. Stephanie's not here to treat your imaginary ailments. <laughs> it imaginary that I keep hearing an octave above middle C? Mm. Is that imaginary? It might be. It might be yourself. Under Article 1, Section 3 of our roommate agreement, I'm calling an emergency meeting. Roommate no, agreement. Not. Leonard moves the meeting, not occur. Is there a second? None heard. The motion fails. Uh, he I'd wrote like everything. The, the bylaws. We have to discuss the implementation of the agreed-upon cohabitation rider, which has been activated now that the two of you are living together. But we're not living together. A girlfriend shall be deemed, quote, living with, unquote, Leonard, when she has stayed over for A, 10 consecutive nights, or B, more than nine nights in a three-week period, or C, all the weekends of a given month plus three weeknights. Wow, they figured this out. He figured this out That's a long time absurd. ago. You initialed it, see? L-H, L-H. Read the contract before you sign it. Because I never thought it would happen. I, I initialed another clause naming you my sidekick in case I get superpowers. <laughs> yes, you did. No. <laughs> the three of us now get individual shelves and the door becomes communal. Next, okay. a part of the bathroom schedule. Now, I'm given to understand women have different needs, so we'll have to discuss that. <laughs> I'm going to bed. But yeah, but, 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 but. take this with you. Look, and have Stephanie initial here, 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 here. States that she does not now, nor does she intend to play a percussive or brass instrument. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Oh, he took it. He took it. I can't even reach that octave. Sure sounds like a tumor pressing on the auditory nerve. No, absolutely not. I don't care what the symptoms are. My girlfriend is not going to give you a prostate exam. Ooh. Leonard satisfied you sexually last night. Oh time. my God. <laughs> I like the look on her face. Don't ask questions like that. Well, yeah, I heard you ask it over and over. Uh, he did very nicely. See, she's not aww. offended. And now you finally have an answer. Why didn't she answer her earlier? him earlier? I've heard a lot about you. Really? Mm -hmm. I haven't heard a thing about you. Uh-huh. <laughs> the guilty look away. Why haven't I heard a thing about this woman who lives across the hall and comes into your apartment in the morning <laughs> in her underwear? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's heard about you because we're involved and and you haven't heard about her because we're not involved i never slept with her i swear <laughs> in leonard's defense it wasn't for lack of trying uh thank you sheldon you're welcome leonard but sarcasm sign saying, um, i need to write a sarcasm Penny sign is one of our many neighbors you know and, and you don't know any of the other neighbors come and go well, no they don't much. some mornings i'll just mosey down to the third floor in my pajamas and have cereal with mrs vardabedian i've never once been invited to have cereal with mrs vardabedian she doesn't like you <laughs> well, uh, it was very nice meeting you nice to finally meet you too bye she didn't even know about penny eek what could I possibly have done to offend Mrs. Vardabedian? Oh my god. How do I feel like I'm the one that just got the prostate exam? <laughs> she seems very nice. Oh, she is. She's terrific. Yeah, and she's proving to be a valuable roommate. Roommate? You guys are living together? Like hippies. <laughs> 
We're not living together. Let's find out. Don't you think if a woman was living with me, I'd be the first one to know about it? Oh, sweetie, you'd be the last one to know about it. <laughs> wow. Cute dresses. These are all I yours, I assume? Great on you. Mm -hmm. We're not living together. I think okay. you kind of are. Floral bed sheets. Not living together. Is what she living here and you're not? No, uh, who are these guys at Disney World? I have no idea. <laughs> We're not living together. Okay. You're gonna go down swinging, huh? <laughs> Your jewelry box? We're not. Jewelry Where's box. Where's my bat signal? Bat signal? You have a bat signal? I did. You don't right have here. a bad signal? Oh my god, we're living together. <laughs> That's what set it off. Really? What was your first clue? <laughs> he has hives from anxious anxiety. <laughs> New pants? This is like a rocky Stephanie got rash. for me. Oh. Nice. Cotton? It's more of a wool fire ant blend. Fire ant. Oh no. I decided it was time for us to live together. Okay. Leonard, huge mistake. There's a whole buffet of women out there and you're just standing in the corner eating the same deviled egg over and over again. <laughs> See the blonde over there? I can hit on her and you can't. You can get rejected by her. Go hit on her. She's not my type. Okay. Too bad because she was checking you out before. She was? Really? Of course not. Look no. <laughs> Messing with him. I will give either of you $20 right now to trade pants with me. <laughs> 130 over 80. We can attribute that to the stress of sneaking past the security desk. <laughs> Where did you get the stethoscope and the blood pressure cuff? My Aunt Marion gave them to me. She thought if I failed at theoretical physics that I should have a trade to fall back on. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. All I need is for you to authorize these tests. A cardiac stress test, a full body MRI, an electromyogram, a CBC, baseline glucose, upper GI. Yeah. Go home, Sheldon. Can I at least have the upper GI? <laughs> I already drank the barium. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. okay. Oh, good. Throw good the pants that, out. All of it? All of it? What are you washing? A crocodile? <laughs> A crocodile. Uh, can't machine wash these, they'll be ruined. You sure? Absolutely. Machine wash them. Oh no, I wish you'd told me that sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys having problems? No, everything's fine. He's having really? problems. Leonard, honey, you know, if you're uncomfortable with the way things are going, you're allowed to say something. You sure that doesn't sound right? <laughs> <laughs> Come well, on. Your Who raised them? This is as important as hers. No, that doesn't sound right either. <laughs> the relationship to move at a pace that you both are comfortable with yeah i could say something like that to her and he never did it he's not gonna do it is he you have a really good grasp on this maybe you could talk to her oh my god no nope. you're kidding right no but that's okay <laughs> want to come with go <laughs> wow i have expected it to come back one more time oh no what? <laughs> <laughs> is terribly inflamed. I knew it. <laughs> You're gonna need to stop talking immediately. Amazing. For how long you... <laughs> immediately. Immediately. <laughs> Sheldon? I shut him up. For good. <laughs> I just performed a Sheldonectomy. <laughs> Sheldonectomy. Listen, we need to talk. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Things between you and me have been going pretty quick. It's just a little scary. Oh well, yeah, but scary good, right? Uh, <laughs> sense the tone. I think it's important to remember that we move at a pace that is our speed. And he's butchering this. Uh oh. How about I tell you what I'm feeling? Oh. Really right now? I know. To avoid the conversation. Wait, aren't you supposed to wait an hour? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And we failed to adjust this year. Your pants are ruined. Good. <laughs> so, how did the talk with Stephanie go? Well, it didn't. Um, I did tell her that I had feelings. Good. Good. Then what? The subject got changed somehow. <laughs> <laughs> she changed the subject a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it didn't take very long. She was. She. Oh, okay. Really? It's all good. Really? It's gonna work out. You are entitled to try and make things go the way you want them to. Really? Yes. <laughs> you always have to go along with what the woman wants. Oh my god. Just rethinking my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Aww.
What do I say to her? I don't know. I mean, what have women said to you when they wanted to slow a relationship down? I really like you, but I want to see how things go with Mark. Ouch. Yeah, that'll slow it down. <laughs> and sex again. I'm sorry, I totally interrupted you. What were you saying? Right, yeah, um... I can't tell if so, she's manipulating him Stephanie, or not. I really like you. Oh, God, here comes the speech. We should spend a little less time together. I'll call you on Tuesday, and then you never call me. You pretend like you've been having problems with your voicemail. I pretend like I don't care, <laughs> even though I'm dying inside. Oh, no. No. No, no. It's not that serious. I, I wasn't going to say any of that. I, I was just going to say, I really like you. Hey. Nice shirt. Hey. hey. Sweater. Hey. Nice sweater. <laughs> Every time I talk to her about moving out, she cries and we have sex. Uh, You're lucky. With me, it's usually the other way around. We have sex and then we cry? You can't oh, talk God. to her. Why don't you just text her? Isn't that kind of cowardly? Aren't you a bit of a coward? True. Oh, boy. Sold. Don't do this over it text, would be man. It for our relationship if you moved back to your place. Oh, man. Hey, I'll never have sex again. <laughs> oh, I was wrong. See ya. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sheldon? We are out of verbal key. Do you have any? <laughs> Some piney would be nice. Piney? Piney? <laughs> Honey. <laughs> Heck of a typo. Ah. Oh boy. <laughs> this was a fun episode, but it was also a good episode for Leonard's growth because it shows that Leonard was able to figure out his boundaries and is willing to try to set them even if he wound up chickening out and texting Stephanie instead of talking to her face to face. For somebody who tried to be a macho alpha male with the asparagus jar last time, he's not so much with uh, facing things head on that he should. So... Yeah, Stephanie seems to have brought a lot of baggage into her, into this relationship too, which I guess I was so focused on Leonard and his issues that I didn't even think about what her issues might be. And I guess part of that might be also that Stephanie seemed like she had uh, things like pretty together in the last few episodes that we've known her. And like we've seen before that Stephanie's sex drive is pretty high, so it's possible she was just in the moment when initiating sex with Leonard in this episode. But I also couldn't help think that she might be manipulating him by distracting him with sex. Uh, I'm not, not entirely sure, but um, I, I wasn't entirely sure. But near the end, when they do it again, um, she seems to remind him that he had something to say. So I don't think she might have been unconsciously putting off the conversation, but he wasn't. she wasn't trying to manipulate him outright. Uh, but yeah, Sheldon was the first person to point out that Leonard, uh, to Leonard, that Stephanie is now living together with them as per their roommate agreement. And I think it was a couple episodes ago, maybe even last episode, when he mentioned he had a friendship agreement with Leonard. So just how many agreements do they have? And I'd also love to learn more about what is in these agreements, because it feels like Leonard has agreed to a lot of stuff without even thinking it through or remembering any of it. Uh, Sheldon mentions a lot of provisions, though. Everyone gets their individual shelf in the fridge. Uh, increased frequency of vacuuming to make up for the increase in dead skin cells. Uh, bathroom schedule. I noticed he didn't mention splitting up the rent in any way. And I guess that's less important to him than having things in a neat and orderly fashion uh, in a way that's acceptable to him, which is which is nice, I guess. But um, not like Stephanie would necessarily mind given that she's a doctor and probably makes a lot more than they do. Probably. Probably. Uh, speaking of which, though, Sheldon, now that he has a doctor around, just keeps seeking Stephanie's medical advice and all around being like very intrusive, uh, asking Leonard if she'll give him a prostate exam. Like, uh, even showing up to her place of work to ask for a full suite of medical exams. And I, I do like the way Stephanie eventually dealt with him, just telling him his larynx is inflamed and he can't talk. It's kind of mean, but he was also annoying her way too much, so I understand. And uh, Sheldon's responses to her while she got her, uh, she has her tongue depressor in his mouth are super funny. Ah, what did I do? Stephanie performed a Sheldonectomy and took care of that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, Penny comes in one morning in her underwear looking for coffee, and it's the first time she and Stephanie actually meet. And yeah, back to Stephanie seeming pretty together. She doesn't get jealous that Leonard once dated Penny. Uh, she doesn't harp too much on the fact that Leonard didn't tell her at all about Penny. Uh, doesn't feel threatened in any way. I'm actually wondering if she underreacted. Like, it should be a bigger deal, right? They've dated long enough that Sheldon considers her living with them, and she doesn't know one of Leonard's closest friends. And... 
I'm also curious how they never came into contact after all this time. Uh, I guess maybe Leonard's been trying to keep them from knowing, or try to keep Stephanie from knowing about Penny, right? Which, if that is the case, yikes, Leonard. Um, but yeah, I loved that moment when Penny does some investigating to make Leonard realize he and Stephanie are living together. Uh, the dresses look good on Leonard. Uh, all the toiletries. We're not living together. Uh, you know what they say, denial is not just a river in Egypt. And yeah, it's his missing bat signal that eventually clues him in on the fact that they're living together. Did she really throw it out though? Because I'm hoping she just put it away somewhere because you don't throw your partner's stuff out just willy-nilly. That's pretty screwed up. Uh, and then she gave him itchy pants. I thought he was suffering from anxiety and was like developing a rash or hives from uh, having somebody live with him without him realizing. But no, just itchy, itchy pants that he ruins on purpose. And yeah, that laundry scene was a lot of fun. Penny was trying to teach Leonard to advocate for himself. Uh, if you're uncomfortable, you can say something. And he was like, are you sure? That doesn't sound right. Like, who raised him, man? Who raised him? No, no, no seriously, who raised him? Because like a lot of the assumptions we make uh, in our lives are rooted in our relationships with our parents. And we've met uh, well, we've met all the other guys' as parents. Uh, we have just haven't seen Howard's mom. But we've gotten the sense that Leonard's parents are the opposite of warm and expected a lot out of him, didn't really allow him to have a voice. So I think that's where his uh, lack of a voice, th that's probably what makes him feel in ro ro romantic relationships that he doesn't uh, have a voice either. And um, But yeah, Penny gets him to talk to Stephanie. Good job, but he gets distracted by the sex. Uh, comes back down and Penny checks her watch and she realizes like he had sex and was like, it's not very long at all, isn't it? She keeps it to herself though. Um, I've actually read studies that say that the median time, so not like the average of all the times added together and divided by the times, uh, but the median time, so like, say there are, say there are nine times, the fifth one would be the median one. It would be the one right in the middle, just in case you don't know what median is, uh, for those of you, I know some people here don't speak English as their first language, so just in case, um, but yeah, I've read that the median time for heterosexual vaginal sex is around 5.4 minutes, which to me, it's shockingly low. Like, so how, if it's, if the median is that low, how fast exactly was Leonard that Penny was surprised at how fast he came back to the laundry room, right? Um, we also did hear last episode that I think Leslie nicknamed Leonard Speed of Light Leonard, which sounds like a cool nickname given his fondness for the Flash, but it's sad in the context of sex. And uh, yeah, now I'm wondering where they got that median number of 5.5 four minutes did like someone keep track whose job was that or was it like self-reporting the numbers in which case there would be bias in the reporting so but yeah actually it, it seems weird because leonard came back when leonard came back his pants were ruined already uh have, after having only put them in before he left to talk with stephanie and penny had put his clothes in the dryer so like a typical spin cycle is like 35 to 40 minutes so okay i won't, I won't overthink it we'll just make the joke that he's super fast in bed <laughs> and that uh penny noticed but yeah hey uh penny got him to grow a little and learn to advocate for himself and even if he eventually did it through texting uh but yeah this is what i was referring to at the beginning of the series when i said that he had growing up to do before the writers set him and up uh, set him up with penny as the end game couple but yeah uh when he tried to talk to stephanie uh stephanie assumed the worst when leonard said like i really like you but and like she's trying to be cool but she has these insecurities because she's had this happen time and time again to her where they just like people just wind up ditching her, which honestly isn't really her fault. Like the callousness of the people she's been with seems to be the issue. Um, on the other hand, she does seem like she's over eager to speed things along in a relationship. Uh, I didn't pick up on Leonard's tone when he said moving so fast was scary. She's like, scary good, right? I guess... It feels like she was projecting her hopes for the relationships into the conversation instead of just listening to what Leonard was trying to say. Uh, not to say she's a bad any bad person or anything. She just, uh, like, she seems really cool and a fun person to be around. And actually, she seems like she would be a good fit for Leonard if maybe not for the fact that right now he's uh, afraid to commit to her and the fact that she's moving too fast for him. And, yeah, I don't know what to make of the fact that she still wants to have sex with Leonard after he texts her to move out, though. Like, I'm not going to speculate on that, because I, I do find it a little surprising, though. Uh, but then at the end, uh, the ending was Sheldon typing into a text-to-voice program to talk to Penny. Uh, Penny offering him tea, and him saying that he would like some honey in his tea. <laughs> honey. 
Uh, poor Sheldon has to be silent now. Given how hard it is for him to normally like hold his tongue, this must be killing him. So it's fun to watch unfold. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Leave a like, really helps with the channel. Full reactions and episodes a week early on Patreon in the link in the description below. Check that out. And yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you to Nakia for editing this episode, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, friends.